remember that 2009 Chevy Traverse that I made a video on with the auto scanner on showing you how to check your catalytic converter well I got it today and we're gonna be changing the catalytic converter all right it's gonna be a quick video I'm just gonna show you how to take it off put it on we're gonna clear the code and um, we'll check in about a week to see if the light came back because you got a driver you got to put on on the you got to put like 50 or it depends there's a certain way you got to drive the truck it's called the drive cycle for the monitors to complete so once you drive it a certain way if that catalytic monitor completes then we'll know that the car's fixed but for now uh, we're just gonna do the repair and I'll keep you guys updated on on the truck so let's start turning some wrenches okay so the catalytic that we're gonna be changing it's right down there I believe it's the bank 2 if I remember correctly and the bank 1 is somewhere back there so we got to start off by taking off that heat shield uh, taking off a couple things that are in front of it and um, let's get to it okay let's get to work let's take off this upper engine cover just so we can see a little better down here okay so I'm gonna unbolt this from here pretty much anything that's gonna be in your way you want to get it out of your way okay so um okay we'll move it to the side just leave it right there okay we have to unplug our oxygen sensor I should probably show you guys I don't want okay we're gonna unplug the oxygen sensor connector that's right here okay so this is why I understand why some people don't like to do how-to videos because it takes too long and you got to show every little piece and if you don't show it somebody's gonna get pissed and it's like well why are you showing us this but you don't show us how to take this off it's like homies if you're working on cars you should know how to take things apart and put them back together. You don't need somebody to tell you how to do it. Now, if you've never worked on cars, then yeah, it's a, it's a different story. Okay, but that's why if we assume that a lot of you guys work on cars, then it's easier to go through the motions and just explain what we're doing. Okay? Okay. Let me tell you, the hardest part about working on cars is taking these fucking connectors off. So that's that. I need to take the heat shield off, and that's held down by three, three 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so if I zoom in, where is it? That one right there? That one right there? Three 10 millimeter bolts. If you're working on a truck like this, you're gonna see them, okay? You don't need me to tell you which bolts, how many turns, what tools to use all that shit comes with um when you put your fucking hands in the car when you put your hands on the car you're gonna start figuring out what you need to take off okay so let's see if my gun can get in there no Craftsman with a 10 millimeter swivel snap on Okay, it hit the floor. We're okay. Basically, you're looking for three of these, okay? Three of these, and that heat shield should slide right out. Heat shield. Basically, one bolt, two bolt, three bolt. Take that out. So now you're looking at something like this. Okay. Now you can see the headers. All right, so if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I always say, get the part beforehand. Look at the part and then take a look at what you're taking off. This way you know exactly what you're gonna be taking off and you don't spend time removing extra nuts and bolts and you're like, oh fuck, I didn't have to remove that one. Okay. So right now I was thinking of taking off the headers but luckily I got the part here 
For those of you who have never seen the catalytic converter, there it is. Okay, now this is factory. This is from GM. Now, I don't have to take off the headers. This right here, it looks like it sits like this up in the car. So I gotta take off a bolt that's in here. And then two bolts, or this might be upside down because I see, I see three bolts, three nuts. Okay, so this might go like this. Three nuts on top, take those off, go under the car, take these two off, and then take that one off that's holding uh, the catalytic to the block. So it prevents any um, wiggle. But um, there's a core on this, so if you get this from the dealer, make sure you take your old one back. It's just a honeycomb in there. You can't see it because I don't have good lighting, but it's just a honeycomb and pretty much as air and fuel passes passes through there, this thing is in charge of reducing emissions. That's it. So when I had a misfire on the truck, I drove it to work and um, it fucked up all the shit inside. So now when I fixed my misfire, this thing wasn't able to do its job and it cost me a pretty penny. Son of a Alright, now we're gonna start unbolting. It's pretty quick. I'm just making a quick video for you guys, but it's pretty hey, straight. Real quick. I was taking off the stickers and I saw this one. This one right here tells you that there is a core. There's a core on this catalytic and you gotta return it. What well, that means, for those of you that don't know what a core is, you pretty much go, you buy a part. Let's say this part this one right here for example let's say it's 500 bucks they're gonna charge you 600 bucks they're gonna charge you 600 for this when you take your old catalytic back they'll give you your hundred dollars back okay if you don't take it then you lose your money but it tells you right here there is a core so return it before you start taking those off you want to spray them down with a little lubricant you don't want those nuts to break on you I lost my WD-40. Someone stole my WD-40. You let that lubricant soak in to the nuts and the threads so that when you take it off, uh, you should have no problems. Okay, real quick, to get to those bolts, I'm gonna be using this. It's just a ratchet, an extension, to 15. So, let's start wrenching. This thing sucks balls. Where is my socket? <sighs> okay, let me find my socket, then I'll get back to you. Let's try this angle for you guys. Maybe you guys can, uh, you guys can't really see right, but it's pretty easy. Three bolts, like I said, and um, just fucking zap them. I've been, I've been thinking about uh, making the how-to videos, how to fix this, how to wire that, how to uh, take certain things off. And honestly, I've heard some people say that they take too long to film and to edit. And the truth is, they do take a while. And then shit goes wrong. And then you get mad. You get frustrated. And you start cussing. What happens here? The fucking bolt won't come out. So. There it is. Okay. That one is out. Yatch. Alright. So, this is what you're taking off. That's it on the catalytic converter. There's three of those. I dropped one, but we'll find it. Okay. So under the truck, we're looking at these two bolts right here. This one and this one. Those come out. Then there should be a bracket. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm under the car right now. Can you see this bolt? Okay. One bolt, two bolt. See how easily these come out. Okay, 
Those are 14s, not 15s. Why not just make them all the same size? Ratcheting wrench. This is what I'm gonna use for the, uh, the nut, I mean the bolt that's holding uh, the cat to the, uh, to the block or some shit. Coming out. I gotta tell you, man. Ratcheting wrenches are my favorite fucking tool. It's a ratchet, but it's it's pretty much a very very low profile ratchet. Look how thin that is. All right, this one's a Craftsman, if anybody cares, and it also has the uh, the open end ratcheting. The open end will allow me to just wrench. I mean to just ratchet without um, taking it off the bolt. Okay, let me see if I got the right size for the nuts. I want to zap it right now that it's still bolted on there. So, okay, so it's not a 14. We're going to go down with a 13. Okay, 13 it is. It goes another. Okay, I'm just going to work on this bolt. I mean, sorry, this nut. Oh, it is a bolt. It's a bolt that's holding the cat onto the block. I got it out, guys. I got it out. It took some twisting, some wiggling, but I got it out. Okay? Now, let me take this out and uh, put the other one in. I mean, there's nothing to it. This one's out. The other one's in. All right, so how do you know that you have a bad cat? How do we know that we had a bad cat? The answer to that is... Our oxygen sensors let us know that we have a bad cat. So there's no reason to change your oxygen sensors, okay? You can always come back and change them. It's not too hard afterwards. But if we're going off the O2 sensor data to figure out that we have a bad cat, then we have good oxygen sensors and there's no need to change them, okay? Now I'm just gonna wiggle this back up there. And this goes like this. And it'll just go here. Now, Make sure this shit is lined up up there. And where's my bracket? So once you have the cat up there, you gotta twist it. This is a flex pipe so I can move it out of the way. That's a very good thing. Okay. I'm gonna put this. Here's the nut that came out from the uh, bracket. I'm gonna run it a couple threads in just to hold my cat in place. You don't wanna gun everything down, tighten it up until everything, all your threads are in, okay? I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but trust me, if you're working on a truck like this, it's pretty straightforward. So I put that nut on the bracket, and I'm gonna put these two nuts on the bottom of the exhaust. Now, I'm gonna take my connector and connect it. Now you wanna make sure this engine's cold, and you haven't been driving it, because this shit will burn ya. Make sure the connector clicks, and make sure it goes in straight. You don't wanna bend any of the pins. It clicked. Now it has a little locking tab that you gotta put in so that uh, it doesn't come apart. So that it doesn't disconnect. But honestly, I don't see this shit disconnecting. I don't know. I mean, it's just extra extra measures that these engineers take. Make us work a little harder. But um, okay, just put the three nuts up there. Now I'm gonna gun these two on the bottom, but I'm not gonna tighten the bracket down. The bracket is gonna be the last thing to be tightened, so I wanna make sure I have a good seal and I don't have any exhaust leaks. If you have an exhaust leak, that will throw your oxygen sensors off. So, there you go. Beautiful, okay? Make sure this is nice and flush and it looks good. But I'm not, I'm not gonna tighten the bracket down, that's gonna be the last thing. I'm going back up, I'm gonna gun the three nuts up there. 15 millimeters and then I'll come back down and do this bracket okay so let me do that that's one nut here's the other one almost done okay extensions are always good so uh, I fucking dropped it again this shit is frustrating when shit falls when you don't have the right tools when you have the right tools, but um, you don't have the right parts. Do you really want to be a mechanic? <laughs> but yes, I do. Because it's good money. Not only that, but if you're a mechanic, it gets to a point where um, you work for people, right? You work for uh, shops, you work for certain, uh, 
certain places and you're always like, oh man, this is a good job. This is a good, uh, a good career. I'm making good money. I don't want to get fired. I don't want to quit. This is a good place. I'm comfortable. But it gets to a point in your career where you're like, I can make a living turning wrenches from home. I don't have to work for anybody else. Fuck it. Fire me or I'll quit. I don't give a shit because I can do it on my own because I'm a good mechanic. That's the point you gotta get to. Once you can be a mechanic, once you can be independent and you know you can make it on your own, fuck it. You just go to work to go to work, you know? Yeah, you do a good job, yes. You don't wanna be half-assing jobs or thinking you're the shit at work. You know, you're still, um, you still have good work ethics. But you know in the back of your head that if shit hits the fan, you can move out of the way real quick. There's no, uh, you're just not afraid to get fired or quit your job because you know you can do it on your own. You can make good money and anybody will hire you if, if you want to go work for somebody else. Because you have the experience, you have your certifications, you have what it takes to be valued. That's what I'm trying to say. So now that everything's back in, I mean I didn't show you guys everything else but you guys get the idea. It's pretty simple. It's a pretty straightforward fix. Uh, right now we just, uh, I had the battery disconnected so I plugged that back in. I'm going to start the car and make sure the light's not on and make sure it doesn't come back on. Uh, after that. Uh, on catalytic converters, if the light does come back on, it'll probably come back on in a, in a couple, uh, maybe like 20 miles. You want to clear that code again and drive it some more. You got to break the catalytic in. I've seen codes come back and you got to reset it and have customers drive it and just, uh, it's, that's, that's just how it goes, you know? So right now what we're going to do is start it up, warm it up, just let it warm up at idle and then go drive it. Make sure it runs good. Listen for any exhaust leaks. If you had a clock cat, then you would have ha you would have had loss of power, and in this case, you would feel an increase in power. I just had a check engine light, a P0430, I believe it was, and uh, yeah, just uh, we're gonna start it and make sure it drives good. That's that. Okay, make sure you get the right hole. Okay. No check engine light, that's a good sign. Now we're gonna go on a quick test drive. That's the end of another video. It's just a quick one. I just wanted to show you guys a quick fix on the catalytic converter. I wish I had the scanner working so that I can show you guys the, the after uh, oxygen sensor readings. And this would have been a, a better video, but uh, you gotta make do with what you got. Everything's just gonna keep getting better from here. The repairs are gonna be getting better. The videos are gonna be getting better. We're all gonna be getting better. I'll see you guys on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.